Welcome to our second division lesson. Today we're going to solve some very basic division problems and we're going to show some different ways that we might represent those. Let's get rocking. So today it looks like we're answering a lot, but it's it's okay. Um, it's all related. We're going to answer the questions, what might a division problem look like? And there are several different ways. What are the parts of a division problem? What is the standard algorithm for solving easy division problems? And how else might it represent division? Well, let's start with what a division problem might look like. And it can look a lot of different ways. It might be horizontal. It might be in a little frame. It might be done with a slash because, frankly, most keyboards don't have a division problem sign. And it might even look like a fraction. All of these say 85 divided by 5. So if you'll take a second to stop the video, please add what's blue to your notebook. So what are the parts of a division problem? Well, three parts. There is a dividend, which is the part that we're chopping up, the divisor, what we're dividing by, and finally, the answer to a division problem is called a quotient. So we have sums, differences, products, and a quotient for division. So quickly add that diagram to your notebook, too. So let's do this in a more traditional form. Let's go ahead and put it into a frame. All right, let's put the little slightly curved right there. Okay, I have again turned my paper sideways because having my numbers lined up is wicked, wicked important. If it's not, if it goes sideways, if it gets squished, you're going to have a problem. So let's turn the paper sideways and then we're going to put our dividend inside the frame because I am dividing up 27. My divisor is going to go right here. And when I'm done, my quotient is going to go right here. So I want to know how many times 3 will go into 27. Now, I may already know my times tables well and go, oh yeah, 3 times 9 is 27, I know that. But if I don't, well, here's where the multiplication chart is, my friend. We're going to start at 3, and we're going to come down until we see something real close to 27. Slow down here, this is 24. Oh look, it goes in evenly. How many times? 9. Alright, so let's bring this over and there's my quotient. So this says 27 divided by 3 is 9. Let's check. 9 times 3 equals is 9 times 3 27? 9 times 3 is 27. So I know it's correct. I've used my opposite function to check. Alright, well what if it doesn't go in so nice and neatly? Let's take a look at a number that's one larger. Let's look at 28 divided by 3. All right, let's finish that frame up. 28 is the number being divided. It's the dividend. 3 is, again, the divisor. So does 3 go into 2? Of course it doesn't. But it does go into 28. Let's come over here and see how many times. Okay, 24, 27, but then we jump to 30. So I can't put 30. I can't subtract 30 from 28. 27 is the number I want. How many times? 9, just like before. So, how much is 3 times 9? 3 times 9 is 27. I'm going to subtract that right here to see how much I have left over. I have 1 left over. Can I fit 3 into 1? No, I cannot. So I'm done dividing. I know that I can subtract 3 from 28 9 times, but when I do, I'm going to have 1 left over. So sometimes people will write this with a remainder of 1. I could subtract it 9 times, but when I was done, I had 1 left over. Now how do I check that? Well, it's similar, but it has an extra step. We know that 9 times 3 will give me 27. And that takes care of the quotient. But now let's take care of the remainder. Plus 1 more gives me... 28. I should have the same number here as here. If I've done it right, I do. Let's keep working with that. Let's try 38 divided by 6. All right. Let's put 38 divided by 6. 
Does 6 go into 3? No, it doesn't. It's much too large. Will 6 go into 38? It certainly will. Let's find out how many times. Here's 30. Here's 36. But 42 is too big, so 36 is as much as I can take out of 38. How many times will it go? 6 times. So let's do 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Let's subtract and see what we have left. 8 minus 6 is 2. 3 minus 3 is nothing. So I have 2 left over. Can I fit 6 into 2? I can't. So that's left over. Now I end up with 6 remainder 2 as an answer. To check it, I'm going to say, I'm going to take my quotient, 6, times my divisor. Oh, that's not my divisor. There's my divisor. 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Add in my remainder. I should have here what I started with. And I do. So this one's correct. My solution for 38 divided by 6 is 6 with a remainder of 2. Let's try 51 divided by 7. There goes our dividend and my divisor. How many times will 7 go into 5? Well, it doesn't. But will it go into 51? It certainly will. Let's go up here and see how many times. 7, bring it down, bring it down to 42. 49 is close. 56 is too much. So let's back up to 49. And you'll see that it goes in 7 times. And that's 7 times 7 is 49. Let's subtract that. Eleven minus nine is two. Can seven go into two? Absolutely not. So that leaves us with the remainder. Let's check it. I'm going to take my quotient, multiply it times my divisor. Seven times seven is forty-nine. Add my remainder back in. My solution for that is 51, which matches that. My solution is 7 with a remainder of 2. All right, here are two for you to try. The first I'm going to ask you to try is 13 divided by 2. Turn your notebook sideways. Do this in your notebook. Stop the video, and we'll check. So the first thing you would have wanted to do is to write, whoop, finish my frame, that would help. There we go. Is to write your dividend in there and your divisor. So now this says 13 divided by 2. And you should have asked yourself, self, can 2 go into 1? No, it can't. But can 2 go into 13? Sure it can. How many times? Well, let's grab 2. There's 12. There's 14. 14 is too much. So 12 will go, it will go in six times. Okay. 2 times 6 is 12. Subtract to see what's left. And 13 minus 12 is 1. Can I fit 2 into 1? I sure cannot, so that means that I am finished. And 6 remainder 1 is my solution. Let's check to see if my solution's right. 6 times 2, that's sloppy, is 12. 12 plus my remainder is 13. 13? 13, I am in business. 6 remainder 1 is the correct solution. Let's jump down to 26 divided by 4. Stop the video, do this one in your notebook, and then we'll check. All right, so first step, and then 26 divided by 4. Will 4 fit into 2? It will not. Will 4 fit into 26? You bet. So 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. There's 24, and there's 28. 28 is too much. So 24, we want 6. 6 times 4 is 24.
and let's subtract. 26 minus 24 is 2. Can 4 fit into 2? Nope. So that's my remainder. Let's check for accuracy. All right, let's take our quotient, which is 6. Multiply that times our divisor, 4. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus our remainder of 2 gives me 26. 26 here, 26 there. My solution is accurate. Yay me. Okay, so are there other representations for a division problem? Well, sure there are. If you've got large numbers, it can be a real pain, though. So I'm going to work with some simple numbers. What if I wanted to do 9 divided by 2? Well, what I'm really doing is seeing how many groups I get if I divide 9 into groups of 2. So how many times can I do that? Well, there's one group of 2. There's one group of 2. There's one group of 2. Here's a group of 2. And then there's this one left over. So when I do that, I have four groups and one left over. So there's a pictorial representation of 9 divided by 2 getting a quotient of 4 remainder 1. Are there other ways I could do that? Well, yeah. I could even do an array if I wanted to. I could say, let's see, let's turn this into two groups so that they're even. And when I've done that, I've got one group of four. See, my groups of four, whoops, with a remainder of one. So there are other ways to do it. But if I were trying to do a large number and do it like this, it would take all afternoon. So that's why we've gone to the standard algorithm. All right, so we answered a lot of questions today. We talked about what division problems could look like, what the parts of a division problem are, uh, what the standard algorithm is for solving easy division problems and other ways you might could represent a division problem. It's been a long one. You've worked hard. Have an awesome afternoon.